Do you ever feel confused when it comes to sharing content for your business on social media? If that's the case, then you're in for a treat. Welcome to Strategize Your Business Online. This is a live for entrepreneurs like yourself who are looking for a dose of business inspo and ways to leverage the online space. My name is Dee Boswell Buck and I am the digital marketing strategist behind Boswell Buck Creative Consulting. What we do is we help you to leverage the online space with strategy so you can connect to your target audience. So today we are talking about steps to planning a week's worth of content. But here's the bonus. I am giving you behind the scenes as to how content is planned out and scheduled for my company, Boswell Buck Creative Consulting. Now I'm gonna go straight into it, but I want you to think of three things that you can apply to your brand when you are thinking about the types of content that you're gonna share on social. So here are three things that you'd like to review. Number one, what are your core offers? And this means like, what are the top three core offers, your product and services that you just enjoy doing, the product and services that can really help you to help your clients and bring them joy. What are those three offers and services that you have? Because that is what you are going to be sharing on social media and you're going to be sharing it off often. So yes, people, when you are sharing on social media for your business, there are lots of things that you can talk about, but you also want to remind people how it is that you can help them and you want to remind them with call to actions so that they can reach out to you. So what are your three top core offers? Number two, something that you want to review is whether or not you have any upcoming events coming up. And that could be, is there a promotion that's coming up in your business? Because you don't want to feel rushed when you are sharing that promotion. You want to just bring people into that a little bit slowly. So for instance, if you've got a promotion that's coming up in two months, well, start talking about that promotion now. And that can start with one or two pieces of social media content that elaborates on that type of service that you provide. And then as you get closer, you can talk about this promotion that you have. And you want to do that because you want people to, you, you want your audience to be very aware that this is something that you provide and it's just going to seem very natural. And in my case, we consider our events. So the events would be this one that you're watching here, for instance. So on Wednesdays, I have a LinkedIn Live, and that live also gets streamed to Facebook. So we want to make sure that we've got enough time to plan and let our audience know what the topic is about. And sometimes I do have guests on the live as well. So I want to make sure that we're able to write the caption and make sure that we've got the right image for the poster that we're going to create. And then we let them review it before it goes out. Then number three is remembering that people love to do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So what does that mean? Preparing content that gives a bit of a behind the scenes of your business. And that doesn't mean like sharing the secrets or today I'm giving a behind the scenes as to how it is that we plan out our content. But that could be a picture on social media of a lunch and learn, or it could be a picture on social media that you and your team just ordered a pizza and there was a fun argument about pineapples versus pepperoni. But it doesn't quite have anything to do with the business, yet it still ties your business in. So people are getting to know you. So think about that. What are the things that people can learn about your business 
behind the scenes so that they know that it is a person running the business or they can get to know the team running the business. Those are the three things that I want you to review. Now let's get right into it. And this is about how we plan and prepare content for Boswell Buck Creative Consulting. Now, just gonna let you know that when it comes to preparing content, I used to write the content for my company. But um, what would happen was that I would always prepare content for, like my team and I, we would always make sure that all of our clients were taken care of. And then the content for our company, Boswell Buck Creative Consulting, what was happening was that that was being put on, on the sidelines. So now we treat this company, our own company, as a client. So just like our clients, Boswell Buck Creative, it gets a specific day of the week where we focus on writing content and preparing content for the company. Now, we prepare content for the company on Mondays. So Mondays is a BBC day, which means Boswell Buck Creative. So on Mondays, the morning is for writing content. And a little bit before that, there is some planning as to what type of content is going to be written. But I just thought I would let you know that now I'm not the only one who's writing content because sometimes it just was not getting done. And if you are not showing up consistently, then what's going to happen is that less people are going to reach out to you because you are not showing up often enough. So let me tell you about who's writing the content behind Boswell Buck Creative. I write content. I've got an amazing social media coordinator. She is writing content as well. And then even my virtual assistant, she is awesome. She is writing content. So we write six social media posts for the week. So we show up six times out of seven days of the week. And that content is a team effort. Now, what platforms do we show up on? And even though you're going to hear all of these platforms that we show up on, I just want to let you know that you should be showing up on the platforms that are best for your business. These platforms are best for our business. Now, right now, we show up on our Facebook business page, and you can find that at D Boswell Buck. We share content on LinkedIn, and that means sharing content on my LinkedIn profile, D Boswell Buck, and also sharing content on our company page. So on LinkedIn, we do have a company page, and we make sure that we show up there consistently. Also, we share content on Instagram and we share content on YouTube. Now, YouTube is new. I had a YouTube channel for seven years and it was always unlisted. But we went live last year, like at the end of the year with our YouTube channel. So that, that is growing nicely. And what we're doing is we take our lives and I'm going to share a bit more about that. But we take these lives and we repurpose them onto the YouTube channel. So I covered the Facebook business page, LinkedIn profile, our LinkedIn company page, Instagram, YouTube, and we make sure that we have one to two posts that are that go up on our Google business page because Google loves it when you are keeping your Google business page up to date. And also, it, I call it the, the little website in the Google search engine. So if somebody is searching for what it is that you provide, then what will happen if you keep your Google page, your Google, your Google business page updated, what will happen is that Google, because you're keeping it updated, it will show up. So it will be one of the first pages to show up and people don't have to do a long scroll to find it. So with your Google business, you want to make sure that you are giving it some love. If you do have one, you can update it with social media posts. We do it one to two times per week. And side note, you want to make sure that your Google business you want to update the days that you are closed for statutory holidays or public holidays. Um, 
I don't know if you've ever seen it where maybe you don't know, you don't have plans on a particular day and you don't know what to do. And the city is shut, is shut down because of a statutory holiday. So you're like, hey, let's go to a mall or let's go to a restaurant. And then you go to Google and you look up that mall, you look up that restaurant, and then you're confused because the Google business page shows up and it says hours may be affected due to the statutory holiday. So Google will penalize you if you do not keep those dates up to date. So I just thought I would share that information. And that is our social media platform as well. So at the beginning of the year, what our virtual assistant does is that she goes straight into Google, Google Business, and she just goes ahead and she updates all of the stat holidays for the year. So set it and forget it and we are done. Now, I talked about these platforms and I wanna say that not all of these six pieces of content get shared across all of the platforms. And that is because each platform is different. Each platform is unique. And sometimes there are two things like two areas on a platform and we don't always double things up. So for instance, there is on LinkedIn, there's my profile D Boswell Buck, and then there is the company page. So what we, what we tend to do is we will on occasion double up, but most often the content that is shared on my profile is not always the same content that is shared on the company page. And then, like I said, on Google Business, we show up one to two times a week. Another reason why we don't always share content across all of the platforms. So we've got the six posts that are written and created for social media. However, again, because the platforms are very, very unique, they don't always work on that particular platform. So for instance, on LinkedIn, we can share an online article. And um, I think it's really great for people to share online articles that are very much in alignment with their business because you show up as a thought leader. If I share an article, like for instance, I remembered sharing an article about um, the fact that Google Business was letting go of their website service. So you can have a free website on Google. However, they were letting that go. So that was a piece of content that I shared on LinkedIn. What I did was I linked the article, I shared a bit of an introduction, and then I put the appropriate, some appropriate hashtags on there. However, something like that, I can't share it on Instagram. You can't share a link onto Instagram. If somebody goes to an Instagram post, they can't click on that post or tap on that post, and then it's going to take them to an actual article. So something like that, I don't share, I didn't share it on Instagram. Another thing is that on Facebook with Bill C135, you they don't really they don't allow you to share any news any news from the online space so for instance in canada we've got cbc we've got ctv and um or cnn right we don't have that that's not i'm not talking about cnn for canada or anything however we do not get any news sources if you are a Canadian and you've got a Facebook account. So we just decided like not to share any links that are outside sources. It's just a little bit too much trouble to source links that are not from an actual news agency. And to be honest, a lot of these platforms, they do not like it when we try to take people off of the platform anyway. So a lot of the content on our Facebook business page would be actual social media posts or the fact that we have an event. So that is something um, that we have right there when it comes to the six pieces of content that we create, because all of the platforms are unique, we do not share the same types of content right across. Now, now you know who are the people behind writing the content. Now you know where it is that we show up now you know that we don't always share everything right across all the platforms but now i would like to get i would like to get into 
what is actually highlighted for our business and social media. Now, these are the things that we find to be very important to get eyes on our business. And also it kind of goes back to the things that I told you to think about, like what are your core offers? Now, here we go. This is what gets shared in our social media. And I'm gonna lay it out to you from Sunday to Saturday. So for us, our work week starts on a Sunday. We're not working on the Sunday, but we have content that goes up on Sunday. So on Sunday, and by the way, after you watch this live, feel free to take a bit of a scroll and then this will really make sense to you. So on Sunday, we always share a newsletter post. So basically that is a post that is a very short blurb with a graphic that tells our audience that there is a newsletter that's going to be dropped in your inbox tomorrow at 10.02. We always have a call to action that if you want in on this newsletter to send me a DM and then we're going to get you on that email list. So that happens every single Sunday. And actually, believe it or not, it really works. I would say that we get at least 60 additional emails, 60 additional email addresses within a year. And that's because we just had a very short blurb that we have a newsletter coming into the inbox on the next day on Monday. And we have that simple call to action that pretty much says you want in, send me a DM. So Sunday is a newsletter. Monday, we share a post about a core offer. So you will always see a social media post that asks our audience to reach out about our full service social media management, online at, ugh, sorry, <laughs> online audits and, um, and LinkedIn optimization. And those are some of the core offers. So Monday is that core offer. Tuesday, which was yesterday. Well, on Tuesdays, there is always a post that talks about the Wednesday LinkedIn Live. So even if you flip back, you're going to see that there was a social media post that talks about what the LinkedIn Live is going to be about on the next day for Wednesday. And it's going to remind you to tune in. And we always leave with, see you tomorrow, Wednesday, that's a bit of a day of rest for us. And it's also because we've got the LinkedIn live going, the Facebook live going. So it kind of takes care of the content. So we rarely share any social media posts. So that is the one day off. Thursday, we do a company reel. So that would be like one of my reels. So basically a reel uh, is anywhere from like video that goes up to 90 seconds and we share that onto Instagram. And then we also share it up on Facebook as well. I don't always think that the reels are appropriate for LinkedIn. It's not like they're bad or anything like that, but I just have a different vibe on LinkedIn. And even though I think I'm pretty funny, on those reels, I get really comical. So I don't always show those on LinkedIn. So you might not see content on LinkedIn on Thursday, or perhaps I might share something a little bit different, or that even could be my reshare day. Like I love to do a scroll on LinkedIn. And then on Thursdays, I'll probably like share something from a business bestie or an interesting article on the LinkedIn platform. So Thursday is that company reel that goes up on Facebook, which by the way, a little bit later, ends up getting repurposed and goes up on the YouTube channel. Then Friday, we again share a post about a core offer. So it could be any of those core offers that I mentioned. And then there is gonna be that call to action to book. And then this brings us down to the last day of the week, which is Saturday. And on Saturday, I kind of take it easy with the social media. And uh, what I love to do is like just during the week, I love to scroll through Instagram and I just love watching reels and I get lost in them. I give myself like just a, a small amount of time. And lately I've really been into like dog videos like the dog videos are the dog reels are just on point and quite funny but 
I find reels and then what I do is I save them. So on Instagram, you I don't know if you know this, but you can save some of the content that you see on the platform and then you can even like categorize it into folders. So what I do is um, when I do that scroll, I might find a reel that is like, wow, this is pretty great. And I'm going to adapt it for my reel Thursday or I'll, I'll find a reel that really aligns with the company values, even if it's funny. And then that will be a reel that will be shared on Instagram on a Saturday. And note, it's somebody else's reel that I'm using. And I'll have a bit of an introduction to that reel in the caption. And, and my eyes are widening here we always remember to credit the creator. So we will thank that creator. We'll make sure that they get tagged just so, you know, that of course lets everybody know that we didn't do the reel, but we think it's a really great piece of content to share to our audience. And actually it's a great way for people to get to know who that creator is. And it's so nice. Sometimes we'll see that the creator will come in, they'll thank us, and they'll even thank us in their stories. So I usually find something that's pretty funny, very enlightening, and then I ask a question. And what happens is that we get people who are chiming in. It's really great for the algorithms, by the way. And also what they do is that they will share it. People share it to their stories and it's kind of like linked to us. So that's just something that we do on Saturday. So Mon Sunday's a newsletter, Monday's a core offer. Tuesday, we talk about the LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live that's happening the next day. Wednesday is no content day, but you're still seeing some content like this live that you're seeing right now. Thursday, we do a company reel. I'm most likely in that reel. Friday, again, a core offer post. And then Saturday, we repurpose and we just keep things light. If you go to my Instagram account, um, you will see the most recent reel that was shared on a, on a Saturday, last week, Saturday. And it's so cute. It's a squirrel that is getting brushed with a toothbrush. And you must be like, why? D, would you share that? But if you take a look at the caption, you'll see the reason why. And um, it just has brought quite a few people like a lot of joy. And also we've seen that people are sharing it from the account. So it's just a great way to show up consistently. Now, think about your visuals. Now, when we are preparing the content, I like to do a nine post scroll test. This is what I call it. And what I think in this nine post scroll test is that if somebody was going to come to my LinkedIn, to my Facebook page, or to my Instagram account, as an example, within nine posts, they should understand about the what it is in terms that we provide for product and services. So if people are scrolling, yet they're, they're not they're not um, capable of understanding what it is that you provide, then your social media, you're, you're just showing up. So something that I like to recommend to people is ask a friend or ask somebody that you kind of know, doesn't know much about your business and ask them to scroll, do that nine scroll or on Instagram, right on the phone. I think you can nicely fit in nine tiles and ask them, are you able to understand within these nine tiles what it is that I do? So they don't need to know it from one particular post, but just within those nine tiles, they should be able to understand what it is that you do because you were clear in your content. Another thing that I think about when I do that nine post scroll test, I look at the font color. So is the font color visible enough? Like, does somebody need to scroll? Does somebody need to like really um, squint to take a look at that font? Is it in the right color so it really stands out? You wanna make sure that people are able to read it. Now for me, like I don't really love the, the fancy fonts. I like the really <laughs> basic fonts because they're just nice and simple. And I always think about whether the person on the other end is able to read it. 
And then I want each post to stand out against each other. So everything needs to be aligned. Don't get me wrong. However, you know, I've got certain brand colors. So I think that if a post goes up today and the, the template color is blue, then I don't want to use blue the next day. I don't even want to use blue like two days down the road. I've got three, four colors. And what I what I try to be mindful of is that use the blue and then on the next post, use a different brand color for the background. On another post, use a different brand color. So as somebody is scrolling through that nine, everything is nice and cohesive things stand out against each other and then if somebody decides to scroll even further then they've got the same colors one of our clients we use browns and beige and we use a nice blue so there's a there is an example right there where we don't want to have social media posts show up where it's beige 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 so, um, you know, even though everything is written and we, by the way, after we write for our clients, we take a look. So we go through, somebody else looks at the content in the team and we read through, we take a look for grammar. And then if we notice that, oh, this template was beige and then another one is brown, well, then we'll just make a recommendation. Like, let's pop that blue in, like switch that one out. So keep an eye on your visuals. That is something that we do. Now, here we go in terms of the caption. Now, when we are thinking about our captions, we need to hit these three points. Educate, engage, insightful. And yes, sometimes I sit on my chair and I know I'm kind of glammed up right now, but in my mind, things are really glammed out. And when we are planning out the content, like when we are thinking about that Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday post, I'm there and I'm like, oh, is this going to be insightful? Is this going to engage? Like, is this going to educate? Is this a piece of content that's going to get our audience to learn? So here, those are the three points that we cover. Now, here are other things that we consider when we are covering those three points. We don't write too, too long. We used to write very long. And then what happens is that we found that we were tiring out. And sometimes like one subject in your business is a great opportunity to write three to five social media posts. You do not have to write everything. So this by keeping our content a little bit shorter. So we used to sometimes take up the full character count. Like on Instagram, you can go up to almost 2000 characters, right? So we keep it very short because remember that people have a very short attention span. I believe there was a saying out there that the attention span was shorter than that of a goldfish, but apparently, news here, a goldfish can hold a longer attention span. So we don't write too long. We stay within 700 characters. And also um, we try to incorporate where possible keywords or we incorporate topics that our future clients, yes, our future clients would search for on Google. So yes, we, we want to speak about a specific thing, but we before we start writing about it, we just do some keyword research and then we incorporate those keywords and we or we incorporate those titles into our content. Now, why is this important? Because a lot of people are not aware, but now social media is a really great search engine. Take a look if you're on Instagram. On Instagram, when you would go to that search bar, the search bar would invite you to look up hashtags, but now the search bar allows you, like it invites you to research keywords. And on LinkedIn, I use that search bar for my clients and also for myself. So if I wanna speak about a particular topic, then I go to the search bar and I put in a particular keyword. And did you know that not only can you search that keyword to see how many pieces of content on LinkedIn went up, 
Well, even to check out like how popular that keyword is, you can toggle on LinkedIn to see how many pieces of content went up in the past 24 hours for that keyword. And then that just gives you a really great point of view as to how popular those keywords are how popular is a particular hashtag on key on on LinkedIn? I really think that you should take a look at those hashtags on LinkedIn. So put up that hashtag in LinkedIn. And if you find that only are 100 people are following that hashtag, it's a waste of a hashtag. LinkedIn has 1 billion people on the platform. So find hashtags that are like four figures or five figures. And I see that Trudy Stone is watching the live. Thanks, Trudy, for tuning in. And she says that she likes this approach. I am so glad. So yes, talking about that search bar on Instagram and talking about that search bar on LinkedIn, their search bars on the majority of these social media platforms. So try it. And you know what? Um, tell me, like, what type of research did you find when you use the search bar? I would love to know, like, what platform did you take a look for a particular keyword? And what was it that you found? Now, I'm going to go to Fridays. I know I mentioned that on Fridays, we talk about our core offer. But on Fridays, we also share what our next live is going to be about. So now I know this is where we get into a juggle. And I'm so glad that I have a team because so let me go back to Friday. Friday is that core offer day. Now, um, we'll share that core offer on Instagram and share that core offer on the LinkedIn company page. I was rolling my eyes trying to envision. However, on Friday, what we do is we announce our next LinkedIn Live. So the LinkedIn Lives are always on a Wednesday. So on Fridays, we share our next LinkedIn Live as an event. And we also share it as a Facebook Live event. So we use a tool called StreamYard and StreamYard allows us to stream these lives across our social media platform. Now with StreamYard, you can stream across Facebook, you could stream ac across LinkedIn and also Instagram. I don't stream across Instagram. And um, so you are able to go into StreamYard and then you put in the description and then you also have we also create a banner that is in the right size and we put that up into StreamYard and then we choose LinkedIn. So, by the way, you can choose either your LinkedIn company page or you could choose your LinkedIn profile. So we choose the LinkedIn profile and then we also choose the Facebook page, D Boswell Buck, and then we hit send. And then what happens is that everybody on that platform, they now see the, the next LinkedIn Live that's gonna be happening next Wednesday. I'm gonna describe what's happening here, but they're gonna see our upcoming LinkedIn Live. It's gonna be up there as an event. We have on the banner, like who our next guest is going to be. We'll have on the banner, like if it's just my picture, that it's a solo. And also on that banner, it shares like the title. It shares the time that the live is going to happen. Now, why I love to have the um, events scheduled on a Friday is because if you notice, this takes a lot of planning. Now, the events are scheduled five days before they actually happen. Did you know that when you schedule a LinkedIn event, you can invite up to 1,000 of your connections? So I'll be honest with you, when it comes to inviting the people who I'm connected with, I don't blindly connect. I actually take some time <laughs> and I, I take about half an hour because it takes about half an hour for me. This is what I do right now and I enjoy it. And what I do is I do a scroll and I see like who are those who are connected to me that are going to find value for this particular live. And um, I used to work in a retail background 
And I know that some of my um, former, like my coworkers, they know people who have a business or they just love social media and they want to know how things are going. So in this case, what I did for this live called Our Steps to Planning, a week's worth of content, I sat down and I took some time and I just scrolled and then I would hit invite, 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 only inviting particular individuals who would find interest. So even though I can invite up to a thousand people, last week I didn't get I didn't get to one thousand people just because I just decided I really wanted to be very strategic. Um, another thing is that if you really want to expand your reach, when you are inviting people to your LinkedIn Live, you can bring it down to like I'm going to invite my U.S. connections. So all you got to do is you when you're inviting you type in united states and a drop down will happen you choose united states and yes you can do this by state but i choose all of the, the us and what i do is uh, what will happen is that linkedin is going to show me all of my connections from the us and then i can just connect with all of them so they are now included in my 1000 so whenever i want to do that i will hit the other countries first and then I go into the Canadian connection. So that's just a little tip for you. Takes a bit of patience, but it's well worth it. And on Facebook, that takes a little bit longer. On Facebook, um, you can't get very detailed that way. But what I do is I go through and on Facebook, you can invite everybody who's following your company page to the event. I don't do that. I go through and I invite like a bit at a, one at a time. And I, I choose the individuals who I think that they're going to find real value. And also, I'm, I'm pretty aware as to which individuals are not very active on social media that I happen to be connected to. And why is this important? Because on LinkedIn, you are allowed to invite up to 1,000 people. So if you know that there are certain individuals who are not going to find value in the live, if you know that there are certain individuals who are never act, who are not active on the platform, then you don't want to use up that invite. So keep that in mind. And rounding things up, oh, I've got more about the, the LinkedIn Lives. So the LinkedIn Lives, they happen on the Wednesday. And I talk about the fact that we schedule them like five days in advance. And also, whenever we've got a guest on the live, by Thursday, by Wednesday, Thursday, what we do is we will email them what the live is going to look like. So we email the graphic, we email the actual caption to them, and then they can tell us like, hey, um, actually, this is my title, or you spelled my name wrong. It's always good to have another set of eyes before things go live. So what happens? to this LinkedIn Live. So it is Wednesday, we are sharing this live. And you know what? I believe in working smart and repurposing. And I mentioned that we also have the YouTube channel. YouTube channel is called D Boswell Buck. So we will share this live on YouTube, but we do not stream on YouTube. When you stream on YouTube, and if you don't have a huge following on the platform, then you are not going to get as many views because unless your platform is incredibly popular, um, there's no, I, this might sound mean, but it's not because I do this for myself. So I follow that same rule. But if you don't have a lot of followers on your YouTube channel, well, then there's no one sitting there waiting to say, um, oh, good, I've got an alert that um, D Boswell Buck got went, went live. So when it get when it goes live, then those are lost views. We get more views actually when we download the video from StreamYard. This is why I like StreamYard. It keeps the actual video and then we download it and we upload it to YouTube. Now, this is what we do on YouTube. We've got some YouTube rules that we like to follow. So we are, we're putting it up on YouTube and what we do is we will, we could very much edit the title. So this live is our steps to planning a week's worth of content. 
I'm not too sure if this is going to be the title on YouTube because what we're going to do is we are going to do some research and find out like what is it that business owners are looking for? Like what are the keywords that they're putting in there? What is the exact sentence? YouTube is owned by Google. So we just play around in the search bar on Google to find out like what is the actual or what is the best keywords to use? What is the best title to use? And that is going to be our YouTube channel. So our YouTube title. So that's going to be our title on YouTube. And then we also prepare a thumbnail. So on LinkedIn and on Instagram, you will see that we have a particular graphic that is created, but it's not the same graphic that we are going to use on YouTube because we're following the rules there, like how many colors are going to resonate with the person who comes to that YouTube channel. We want to make sure that the uh, title is going to be a certain amount of characters, not too long, and we will create a new cover photo so or we call that the thumbnail we also put an intro outro so when you get to the youtube channel you're going to see the thumbnail and then you're going to hear some music and then we've attached an outro so it's just some pretty cool music and it talks about like tuning in to the next live that's coming up and it doesn't end there we take the caption that has been written for social media and we add a little bit more to it or we take from it. So we are adding those keywords that people are looking up. We are also adding some hashtags and then we're geotagging. So um, I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So sometimes we're gonna tag it as being a video in Toronto or Ontario or just Canada. Um, just so, you know, Canadian business owners are able to find our YouTube content a little bit quickly. And then it does not end there. If the video does not perform that great, then we just go back in and we do some tweaking. And that tweaking could involve changing the thumbnail. Um, if there's a guest on my live, maybe we're going to just put the guest on the live. Maybe we're going to tweak the actual title. So that is something that you can do once you've uploaded a video to YouTube. And there you have it. So Trudy says, I didn't know that you could invite your connections to a LinkedIn Live. Great tip to get more eyeballs. Oh, yes, I'm really glad that um, you you got that. And by all means, go ahead. Just, you know, have, a, have some coffee or, or something enjoyable. Or sometimes I'm watching television and I, I, and I invite, invite my guests. So there you have it, everyone. Those are the behind the scenes planning of a week's worth of content at Boswell Buck Creative Consulting. So what are your thoughts? And do you have something to add? I would love to know if you have something to add. Like, do you, is there something that you follow in terms of a strategy for your company? And if you're watching this, this live, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you're watching the replay, I thank you as well. But before you go, please do not forget to share your website, share the name of your business, and where else we can find you on social media. I would love to comment on, you know, on your particular comment and get to know more about your business. So there you go. That's what happened. And um, if you're ever wondering, like if all of this seems a little bit daunting when it comes to social media for your business, you're not too sure how to strategize. You're not too sure what to share on social media, but you know you've got an amazing business and your target audience needs to know about it. I invite you to reach out. Again, my name is Dee and my company is called Boswell Buck Creative Consulting. We help you to connect to your target audience in the online space with strategy, and we will do it all for you. So you can easily send me a DM on LinkedIn or on Facebook or on Instagram, and I'll be happy to share a link to my very quick and easy contact form. And once you fill out the contact form, you'll be able to book um, a date for us to get online on Zoom, and we could discuss your business even further. Or you can visit my website at 
boswellbuck.com and just head over to the contact page. So thank you very much for tuning in to this.